Variables are boxes which you can store data in. They are called variables because the data varies with whatever you put in it. There are various different variables available. A string stores text. It could be a phrase. It could be some numbers. Or it could be a mixture. The computer has no understanding of any numbers that might be found in amongst a string. It just sees them as characters. In fact, a string is just really a list of characters. And a character can store just one of those items. It strings together a list of characters. That's why they're called strings historically rather than text. As well as strings and characters, we do actually need to manipulate numbers quite often. The most common number type that we find inside programming is something called the int. It stands for integer. As you can see, all variables have the same sort of format. You tell the computer what box type you want to use, string, character or integer, for example. You give the item a name and then you can assign a value to that box. That's how you do the assignment. So that puts that value, 1, 2, 3, 4, inside that box, storage box 4. So what can we do with variables? Pretty much everything we do in programming involves variables in some way or shape. Say that we want to use other types of object, floating point numbers for example. We can do that too, but notice now it's asking for some extra information and error messages come up. That's because 12.435 is seen as a double. A double is a special type floating point number and you can see it will be allowed for that. Double is the standard floating point numbers that we use in computing. However, the numbers calculated based on or stored in memory based on a formula. Therefore, sometimes the value that we put into a double isn't the value we get out again afterwards. For example, if I was to put in a double and I was then to display that on the screen just inside label 1. You'll notice the number is correct. But if I make storage box 7 12.2 minus 12.3, it should give me the same value of minus 0.1. This time the value is wrong. Now something like this doesn't look like it's important but in fact it's one of the most difficult items to check for when debugging a program and in a finance based calculation system this would be a major error. This is why decimal was actually invented. Decimal gives a direct number which is always absolutely correct. But when we use decimal, like you see here, we've had to put in an M at the end of our word just to tell the computer, yes, we know that this is the floating point number that we want and we want to store it in the form of a decimal. It has to be exactly this format. Similarly, there is a format called single, which works in the same way as double. And again, we'll come up with an error message. In the same way, if I want to use it as a floating point, 
and I have to put an F at the end to tell it that I definitely want to use a single format. Now we can perform mathematics on these number type formats, but we'll be doing that in a later video. One important item to note is where I've actually put and written all of these different variables. Every variable only works within the set of curly brackets that it's been written within. So for example at the moment storage box 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and one car or one char are all available within any program code that I write in. such as there. You see no error messages are coming up. The reason there are green wiggly lines underneath these variables is because the computer is telling me that although I'm using this variable I don't actually use it in any of my code anywhere. So I'm creating it in memory and then never using it. Storage box 7 works here because these curly brackets are within this set of curly brackets which is where we find our piece of code. If I was to move this variable inside this set of curly brackets. Now this will be destroyed as soon as it gets to this closing bracket. So therefore the code here no longer works. You may say well we could put this code above the code where it's been created but this variable is not created until this first curly bracket so again it cannot work. This piece of code will not run and in fact it won't even let me run the program. When we keep a variable at the top here within the form set of curly brackets we call that a global variable. It has access to all the different pieces of code that we might want within the program. Sometimes we only need to create a piece of code for a short while. This will now run. If we only need to keep a box to run, I don't know, a very short piece of work, it might be really useful to just create it as a local variable within a single piece of code. There are benefits to keeping things local. This box will be created when this piece of code is first run and destroyed at the end of that piece of code. Therefore it doesn't waste memory of just being left in RAM when it's no longer needed. There are disadvantages though as well. Creating a variable takes quite a few processor cycles. Say this piece of code was to be run 10,000 times, one straight after another. The fact that it had to create a variable each time would actually cause it to run slower than if I took that variable, put it as a global variable and then run that code 10,000 times. We're talking about a factor of 100 times quicker to run that than it would be if you had the variable in as well. There are advantages to keeping things in global variables in memory. As we've said before we can keep it so that we can have the same variable accessible in different pieces of code but at the same time if one of these pieces of boxes is very big for example a string can store up to two gigabytes of memory if it wishes to if we store it in a large amount of space in global memory and it's actually only needed in one piece of code you may find that the system causes your program to slow down and it may even crash because it runs out of memory because it's wasting the memory by keeping it in memory all the time instead of just having it when it needs to be in there.